What's up, everybody? I'm here at San Diego Comic-Con 2023 at the EFX booth, which is right behind me right there. We're going to take a look at all the stuff they have on display, go over a little bit of it, and then let's see what you guys think about it. So let's get to it. The EFX booth was fantastic, filled with many pieces I've already seen over the years, but with a few surprises that really set it off. Okay, so let's kick this off with the helmet that actually made me excited to come to the EFX booth today. They just announced the Bo-Katan helmet, and let me tell you, I've already seen three different Bo-Katan helmets. All are pretty incredible, but none of them come close to what I'm looking at right here. First, let's talk about the size. EFX had access to the actual Bo-Katan helmet from the Mandalorian, and this helmet is actually smaller than any of the other Mandalorian helmets out there. It's even smaller than any of the other Bo-Katan helmets out there. Also, I didn't even realize that the helmet for the show was actually 3D printed and EFX has created it the exact same way. And I know what you're thinking, that maybe there's going to be 3D print lines. You know, when I heard, first heard 3D printed, that's the first thing that comes to my head. But looking at this helmet right here, I cannot tell. If they didn't tell me that this was 3D printed, I would not be able to tell just from the look of it. It's that good looking. The paint on the weathering is insane. I would say good or even better than the one that I have at home that I reviewed on the channel and I'll leave a link for you guys to check that out if you want to check that one out. Another thing I really like about this helmet is they built up the interior which is something that I've really wished that, they, that all these helmet companies would do. This one has leather stitching on the inside and lined to give it that authentic look and I like that a lot. I am super super impressed with this one and because of that I ordered it right away. The next one on my list that I really wanted to see in person is the Luke Skywalker lightsaber. Now, I have this one on order, and I, I admit that I had a little buyer's remorse when I bought it, but seeing this thing in person, I have to say I like it a lot. I still wish, though, that it had some light-up features. I think that would set it off a little better. They did reassure me that the first 1,000 are already on the way, and we can expect to see them before the fall of this year. So it is pretty exciting to see that EFX is stepping up their delivery schedules. The Ahsoka Tano lightsaber set was a surprise for me. I did not expect to see these, and they look stunning, guys. Again, no light-up features for these hilts, but I love the look of them. They did say that they have a little touch-up to do with the paintwork, but as it sits right here, I think they look pretty good. They are a slightly different shade from each other, though, with the Shoto being slightly darker than the larger lightsaber. I love the blue metal accents on both of them. I think that looks great. And also, they simulated a little bit of rust or oxidation on the clamps that surround the back part of the pommels, which I think that looks really cool, too. And the gold accent on the front, I've always liked that about this lightsaber, and I think they did a nice job with simulating that. It looks perfect, in my opinion. The only thing I wish they would add to this set, if they're not already planning to do so, is a signature plaque from Ashley Eckstein and Rosario Dawson. I think that would complete this lightsaber set perfectly. The armor helmet arrived a little late to the show, took a couple days actually to get there. This one I saw at Celebration last year, so there's not much more new I have to say about it other than what I did back then. It looks pretty good. Uh, I like that it looks crudely molded together with lots of texture in the metal, which is really awesome. The horns are a little different color than the rest of the helmet, which has more of a bronze appearance to it when you see it in person. There's no lining on this one, unfortunately, unlike the, unlike the Bo-Katan that we saw earlier. So that's, you know, could be a little better. Uh, but it's still a nice display piece nonetheless. The con exclusive are these Death Star High Altitude Surface Modules. Uh, you can order these on the website. They weren't available at the, at the con, unfortunately. They look pretty cool. Not for me, but, you know, if that's something you want to have in your collection, it's available on the site if you want to get it. Overall, I think this is the most excited I've been at the EFX booth in a long, long while. It wasn't overdone with pieces that we may never, ever see get made, but instead had a lot of great pieces that they're working hard to get into collectors' hands. So the Skywalker lightsaber is going to be the first one that I'm hopeful to see arrive on time here in the next few months. Let's see if that happens, and then we can go from there. Let me know what you guys think about the booth tour in the comments below. What was your favorite piece? And until next time, may the Force be with you.